Welcome back, and now we're going to take our knowledge of endothermic and exothermic reactions and enthalpy and combine these together in order to write a chemical equation that gives us an inf information about the amount of energy that that reaction will produce or absorb as it progresses. So this is what we're going to term thermochemical equations. So thermochemical equations are essentially writing a balanced chemical equation with an associated change in enthalpy for that reaction. A thermochemical equation for the combustion of methane or the dissolution of ammonium nitrate would therefore be written with an associated delta H value attached to the question. If Vicar is asking us for a thermochemical equation and it does not provide a delta H with kilojoules per mole, including the sign, we will not be given the mark. So we can see here that the combustion of methane, we have one molar equivalent of methane plus two molar equivalents of oxygen will produce carbon dioxide gas and water. And the enthalpy change for this is going to be negative 890 kilojoules per mole. Remembering that a negative sign shows that it is an exothermic reaction. So this is the amount of energy per mole that will be given off to the surroundings by burning methane gas. For ammonium nitrate solid, plus aqueous, this just means dissolving into water, so producing a solution of ammonium nitrate where the ions are free, so we now have aqueous ions. As you can imagine, freeing those ions up from the solid lattice will require energy and that is confirmed when we see the positive value here indicating that it is an endothermic reaction so it will have a positive delta H value remembering from our last video that the change in enthalpy is going to equal the enthalpy of the product minus the enthalpy of the reactants so a exothermic reaction will have a delta H that is less than zero an endothermic reaction will have a delta H that is greater than zero. So the delta H or the change in enthalpy tells us that for every mole of methane that is being burnt, we produce two moles of oxygen and we will lose or give off 890 kilojoules of energy to the environment. If we had two mole of methane, then we would multiply this value by two work out the absolute amount of energy given off. So if we have a look at writing thermochemical equations, um, let's go through a couple of examples together. So we've been asked to write a thermochemical equation for the complete combustion of octane. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is write the balanced chemical equation. So we're going to start with our fuel. It's complete combustion. So we're going to react that with oxygen. And we know that we will produce CO2 and H2O because these are the products of complete combustion. We will then balance this, remembering to start with carbon first, okay, then move on to our hydrogens. And in this case, we would end up requiring an odd number of oxygen, so 25 over 2. So we need to multiply everything by 2. If you are not okay with balancing these chemical equations yet, this is something that you need to come and see me and practice or go back to the original balancing chemical equations video from earlier last year. Okay, so once we have a balanced chemical equation, we're now going to get the heat of combustion and this will be in your data booklet. If you have a look in your data book, Okay, there is a table that lists the enthalpy of combustion for many fuels. When we look this up, we will find that it gives us the value of negative 5,450 kilojoules per mole, which is great. This is indicating it's an exothermic reaction. We must always include the signs when we're talking enthalpy of reaction because we need to indicate if it is endothermic or exothermic by the use of that sign. So delta H for this reaction, if you remember, delta H is per mole. We have two moles being burnt in this equation. So what we actually need to do 
is multiply the per mole, because this is per one mole value that we got to get 10,900 kilojoules per mole. And that will give us the value that we're going to write on our balanced thermochemical equation because we are going to get 5,450 kilojoules for every one mole that we burn. And in this balanced equation, we must burn two moles to balance the equation. So we have to multiply the value from the table by two to get the final thermochemical equation. Again, ensuring that we show the sign show that we understand it is an exothermic reaction. Okay, let's have a look at doing this one. I'll get you to pause the video, have a go yourself, and then come back and see the solution. This time we're writing a thermochemical equation for the complete combustion of ethane C2H6. Remembering this is a two carbon molecule with single bonds between each carbon carbon. Okay, hopefully you had a go. You started first by balancing the chemical equation. We have a combustion reaction. We would have ended up with an odd number of oxygens on the right hand side, which means you would have had to multiply everything by two to get the balanced chemical equation being two ethane plus seven oxygen gives us four CO2 plus six H2O. Look up the value for the enthalpy of combustion in your data booklet and find it was 1560.7 kilojoules per mole. Now we have a coefficient of two in front of our ethane, so we'll need to multiply this value by two, giving us negative 3121.4 kilojoules per mole. Put this information together and we get the thermochemical equation of two ethane plus 7O2 will produce four CO2 plus H2O liquid, which should be a 6. And then adding in the enthalpy to complete the thermochemical equation, there is the negative to indicate it is an exothermic reaction that produces 3,121.4 kilojoules per mole of ethane burnt. So essentially what we're talking about when we look at the ratios is enthalpy is an extensive property. That, it is, that being said, it means it is proportional to the molar amount specified for the coefficients of the equation. If we change the coefficient, we have changed the amount of fuel being burnt in that situation, so the enthalpy must also change. This reaction is not completely balanced. Sorry. Whoop. This reaction is not completely balanced. So in order to fully balance it, we need to multiply everything by two. Okay, so if uh, sorry, this one is balanced, um, but we need to multiply it by two in order if we burnt two moles of fuel. So if the coefficient of the fuel is more than one, then we must multiply the enthalpy, the delta H value for the combustion of that fuel by whatever we have changed the coefficient to. The same works for when we reverse reactions. For the combustion of methane to produce CO2 and H2O, it, it is a negative value. If we reverse that reaction and look at the formation of methane from CO2 and water, then we reverse the sign. Okay, so if we reverse the reaction, we reverse the sign. Okay, I've got three questions here to do. These are shown on your PowerPoints. I encourage you to have a look at doing the questions yourself and then coming back and looking at the solutions. The doing these questions will blow out the length of the video. If you're confident with them and you can do them, that's great. Otherwise, come back and watch them step by step to get yourself comfortable with the idea of doing these styles of questions. I recommend watching this first one first and then coming back for question two and three to check your answers. So let's get started on working through this one together. The air pollutant sulfur trioxide reacts with water in the atmosphere to produce sulfuric acid according to the following equation. This is one of the environmental reactions that we need to know. So sulfur trioxide plus water produces sulfuric acid. 
we can see here that this has a delta H of 129.6 kilojoules per mole. Remember that we said that we need to include the plus or the minus, otherwise we don't know if it is an endothermic or exothermic reaction. Because it is implied this is positive, we could consider it an endothermic reaction, but you need to make sure it must be specified Okay, you can't assume that the examiner will know you meant it to be positive if you don't include it. Okay, never have an implied positive in your chemical reactions. Okay, we're then told to calculate the energy released in kilojoules when 0 0.5 kilograms of sulfur trioxide reacts with water. Okay, this is where we need to realize that delta H was equal to kilojoules per mole. We can actually make an equation out of this by saying that energy, which is given in kilojoules, would equal the number of mole. Okay, so what was that? Sorry. <laughs> Enthalpy is going to be energy divided by mole because kilojoules is the unit for energy. And then, of course, we have the amount of substance in mole. Okay, so delta H is equal to energy divided by mole. Now, this one's asking us to find the energy released. Okay, so this means that this must actually have a negative that's been left off. So the energy released when this reaction reacts with water. So we can rearrange this equation to have energy is going to be equal to delta H multiplied by the number of mole. Now, what we need to do is find mole. Okay, we've got the delta H. This is from the thermochemical equation. Okay, the thermochemical equation up here, we have delta H. And N, we've been given a mass and a formula. So, of course, N is going to be equal to M on MR. So, first things first, let's work out the number of mole of sulfur trioxide. This one here. We're going to take 0 0.5 kilograms. Remember, this must be turned into grams for us to use it into this. So we're going to multiply by 10 to the 3. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3. So it's going to give us 500 grams divided by the molar mass of sulfur trioxide. So it's going to be 32.1 plus 48, which is going to be 80.1. When we work that out, that will give us 6.24 mole of sulfur trioxide. Okay, so then we can see from the equation, okay, one mole of SO3 is linked to 129.6 kilojoules per mole. So we now have N, so energy is going to be equal to. Delta H, 129.6, multiplied by the number of moles, 6.24. Okay, so this is going to give us a total of 809 kilojoules. And it says the energy released, so this must be exothermic, so negative 809 kilojoules. But because it's asking for energy, we don't actually have to give the positive or negative. This is our energy value, and we can just say that we understand it was released because the energy doesn't have a positive or negative, it is enthalpy that does. So for this one, we needed to use our thermochemical equation and then understand that this kilojoules per mole can be written as an equation, delta H is equal to the energy in kilojoules divided by the number of mole, find our number of mole, rearrange to find the amount of energy. Question two. This time we're looking at the burning of magnesium being an exothermic reaction. This is the one that we did in year 11 to form magnesium oxide. You've been asked to find what mass of magnesium must be burnt to find a particular amount of energy. Remembering that we can say that energy over mole is equal to delta H and the number of mole is equal to mass divided by molar mass. Using these two equations again, 
have a go at making the solution for this question and come back and check your answer. Okay, hopefully you had a go at this. There are a couple of ways that we can do this. We can look at the amount of energy. So this is 1204 being given off by two mole and work out the amount of energy per mole. Okay, then divide the energy by that to get the number of mole. Or we can set up a basic ratio grid. We know that for two mole, we will produce 1204 kilojoules. Okay, so if I want 5000 kilojoules, I need to know X, the amount of mole that will produce that. I can cross multiply and I end up with X is equal to 5000 times 2 over 1204, which gives me the number of mole because X is the number of mole that would produce 5000 kilojoules of energy. Now I have the number of mole. I can work out the mass of magnesium that would need to be burnt. So this is going to be 8.3056, my number of mole, multiplied by 24.3, which is my molar mass, to give 201.8 grams, which for three sig figs was, would round up to 202 grams of magnesium. Okay, our final question here is question three, looking at another scenario. This is saying that methanol can be prepared according to the following equation from carbon monoxide reacting with hydrogen gas, and it is an exothermic reaction. We've been asked to calculate the delta eight values for the following reactions. This is the first reaction here where the coefficients have all been doubled. And then the second reaction is actually the reverse reaction. Have a go, write down your answers, and come back for the solution. Okay, so hopefully you came up with, because this one, the coefficients had all been doubled, we needed to do the same to the enthalpy change. So for two mole, we would double the enthalpy, and that would give us a value of negative 180 kilojoules per mole. Remembering that sign, it needs to be included. Okay. For B, we have reversed the reaction, but we haven't done anything to the coefficients. So now all we're going to do, the value remains the same, but we change the sign and it becomes an endothermic process. Okay, if the forward reaction is exothermic, then the reverse reaction will always be endothermic and the signs change, but the value for delta H will remain the same. Okay, that's it for thermochemical equations. I highly suggest you go to chapter 2.1 and 2.2, look through those and do the review questions to consolidate this information and bring your questions to class on where you have been confused. There'll also be a multiple choice quiz for you to complete and check your understanding of the things that we have covered in this video. I hope that you are tracking well and I'll see you in class.